On the front lines of Kiev, a pianist tries to break the tension with an impassioned recital. It helps to boost people's spirit and morale, and we also want to do something nice for the riot police so that they could try and understand a few things. But there is little sign of understanding between the two sides as the standoff enters its third week. The opposition's demand that President Viktor Yanukovych step down has been amplified by the European Union. Meeting in Brussels Monday, EU foreign ministers issued a joint statement urging the formation of a new government and constitutional reforms that would pave the way to free and fair presidential elections. EU Foreign Affairs Chief Catherine Ashton. We're working closely with civil society leaders who I've spent uh, some time with talking about their issues and concerns, the importance of stopping any form of violence, bringing to justice those who have perpetrated that violence, and moving forward to the work of the Parliament on constitutional reform, which is a key part of trying to solve this crisis, and onwards to free and fair elections. While the EU is offering Ukraine closer trade ties, it has stopped short of imposing sanctions. But the EU should target the wealthy backers of Ukraine's leadership, says Arisia Lutsevich of London-based policy institute Chatham House. The oligarchs, the business people, and I'm not talking here about sanctions as such, I'm talking about existing legal basis of scrutiny of financial accounts in European banks of politically exposed people, and we do know that there are senior government officials in Ukraine who are banking in uh, Europe and the source of this uh, funding is quite dubious. President Yanukovych turned away from signing a trade deal with Europe in November, choosing instead a loan agreement with Moscow. All eyes are now on Russia as it hosts the Winter Olympics. Once that scrutiny is lifted, many protesters in Ukraine fear another crackdown backed by Russia. Ian Bond is from the analyst group Centre for European Reform. There are some really quite worrying comments coming out of Moscow about Moscow's uh, thinking that maybe Ukraine would be better if it were federalised, which I think is code for some sort of split between East and West. As the geopolitical rivalry plays out, the protesters say they will not leave their barricades until their demands are met. Henry Ridgewell, VOA News, London.